Hi, I'm Jennifer Hatfield, a museum educator at Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art. We are continuing on our STEAM tour. We will be looking at Roxy Payne's sculpture, Bad Lawn. Take a moment to let your eye wander around the artwork, looking at some of the colors and details that you see. Feel free to pause the video to give yourself enough time to look. Before you share some of the things you notice, let's take the title of the work and think about what those words mean to us. When thinking about a lawn, it's that space in front and around a home. It usually features grass, which is mowed and uniform in height, and probably even in color. So, if we close our eyes for a moment and think of the words bad lawn, what kind of images do we think of? Give yourselves a few moments to think of the items that we might see that make a bad lawn. Pause the video, and when you're ready, you can open your eyes and look at the image again. Do you see any of the images in your mind in the work Roxy Payne has created? The artist uses lots of various materials when creating his sculptures, but has a long history of gravitating towards outcast materials, ones that are ugly, dead, or abhorrent. To create his botanical forms, those relating to plants, he crafts from industrial materials, including polymer, fiberglass, lacquer, oil, and stainless steel, and then he meticulously paints those by hand. These fictive versions of nature, which he calls replicants, seem real and have fooled many viewers. In art, this is sometimes called trompe l'oeil, French for tricking or deceiving the eye. When an artwork uses trompe l'oeil, there is often a bit of humor in the piece as well as an attempt to have the viewer look closer and maybe re-examine what they are looking at. Roxy Payne looked again at his own upbringing when working on Bad Lawn. His time growing up in suburban Virginia, where perfect green lawns were coveted and nasty disruptions like weeds and bare patches were despised. He has said that to achieve these uniform micro-paradises, was a sign of economic success and social standing. If we take a close look at that micro level that Payne has created, that immediate small scale part, which is part of a larger ecosystem, that bigger macro level. Again, what are some of the things we see? Pause the video to write down as many of these items that you can find and then share them with a partner next to you. Maybe we see a dandelion or mushroom. Maybe you can identify the taller bit of Johnson grass, noticing some of the nut grass or even the thistle. These plants provide clues about the microenvironment. The presence of the mushrooms and nut grass let us know that it is a wet environment. The thistle, that purple plant, is a real survivor in plant species, existing in tough to grow areas. Crystal Bridges Director of Trails and Grounds identified some of these plant species in Payne's work. But even if you aren't familiar with the types of plants in the artwork, you can note the variety of plants presented. Variety in plants and organisms, or biodiversity, is critical to a healthy ecosystem. Within that system, we are looking at that micro part, so such a small section of that larger ecosystem. It would be hard to comment on the overall health of that bigger area from such a small area. However, seeing such a variety in a small section is a positive sign and in ways goes against the firm impression given by the title that this is a bad section or area, that bad lawn. Nature thrives in areas where there is diversity in plants and animals and other organisms do as well. Pollinators and butterflies are not drawn to a uniformly cut lawn that might have an abundance of pesticides to keep out weeds and other unruly plants. And certainly those lawns don't have grasses to attract other types of insects either. 
Homeowners of these perfectly manicured lawns usually make liberal use of herbicides, fungicides, and insecticides. These are formulas that can destroy what are considered pests and annoyances like insects, stray grasses, and fungi. Payne's work seeks to celebrate that unruliness that nature is. Thank you.